Hello, I'm Bill Warren, uh, and I've been in the shipwreck treasure salvage business <clears throat> since the late 1970s. And this little talk that I'm going to give you, which will not be long, will explain who and what I am in this specialized business. Uh, so I began uh, researching shipwrecks when I was singing in Alaska. And then I moved to uh, Southern California and I learned to scuba dive. And I started a sea urchin diving business, commercial. I had the largest diving business in the state of California for sea urchins. And during my first year, I found my first shipwreck on an island called Santa Cruz. So I continued my research and since then, I have been involved in the business 40 years. And I know every aspect there is about treasure salvage, uh, from research to searching with electronics to salvaging to marketing, archaeology. I've studied that for a number of years. Uh, and I have been involved with different foreign countries like Namibia, United Kingdom, the Bahamas. And while I'm mentioning the Bahamas, I had the largest treasure shipwreck salvage license there, which took three years to get. So my license was approved in 1991. Until 1994, we discovered many, many shipwrecks in the Bahamas. And that was the source of my first book that I wrote called The Shipwrecks of Great Abaco Bahamas. Okay, so that lays the groundwork for... Uh, who and what I am. Um, I am accomplished in many aspects of this. I have run side scan sonar. This is a ship I found off the California coast with side scan. I don't have the equipment anymore because I didn't uh, think that I would be back in the business because finding the financing has been difficult. Um, this is my brochure, if you can see it. I think you can. This is one of the ships that I had. <clears throat> it was a 55 foot commercial fishing boat. I converted to a dive boat and I built with my own hands the hydraulic system on the back of the ship for the A-frame. And I also built the blower system on the back if you look closely at the stern of the ship. Um, this photo on my brochure shows a book that I published that I made as a gift to five or six different countries. And it's 1,100 pages of uh, archeological information about treasure shipwrecks <clears throat> and discusses every aspect of what is on a wreck site from edge swords to the wood, the kind of timbers that they built the ships out of, how deep the artifacts deep uh, are embedded into the sand and so on. This is a photo here of Joe Barnett, my chief diver, and I in the Bahamas in Great Abaco where we found King Charles I shipwreck, which sank in 1670. It was the first ship to carry British colonists to what is the south of America today. These are some gold coins that we found. Let's see, what's on the other side? Um, this is my scuba diving card. I was certified by NAWI. This is a letter from the Queen. It was dictated to her personal secretary, who now is in he uh, head of uh, immigration in the United Kingdom. And in this letter, which I can send to, to anyone, it discusses the Queen's great interest in me finding her sunken treasure in the Firth of Forth River in Edinburgh, Scotland. It was King Charles I royal banqueting service. I have the location. I've spent years researching this. I've had three-dimensional multi-beam imaging done by a company out of, I think it was Belgium or Denmark, called Rison. It's in 17 meters of water. I never got the financing. I was there last year in August for 30 days, and the wind blew, and, and we couldn't get our 40-foot boat out onto the river, and I left after 30 days and went to Miami to meet two billionaires, who, one of which lives in Nassau. They didn't show up for the meeting two times, um, and that was a great disappointment to me. 
Um, I don't want to be a crybaby, but I'm a serious player in this business. This is me when I took my company public. I'm the guy uh, right here. And this uh, unit was built for me by the Honeywell Corporation. It's a remote operated vehicle. And uh, we used it aboard my 60 foot ship and located some shipwrecks off the coast of California in San Diego. That unit cost me $300,000. Uh, and during that time, in 1988, I was the first American in history to take a shipwreck salvage company public on the stock exchange. My company was named Golden Quest Incorporated, and it started on the penny stocks at three cents and went to a dollar. And an interesting part of that story is I own 16 million shares of stock. But Mel Fisher, the famous treasure finder from Key West, Florida, I put on my board of directors. And um, I gave him 750,000 shares of stock, free trading stock. It was worth about $750,000, and he didn't check with his broker. And he sold it when he was drunk one night. He was an alcoholic in Key West at Tony's Bar for $20,000. And the next day, he called me and said, did I make a mistake, Bill? And I said, yeah, you threw away $750,000. So anyway, back to the Bahamas. This is a page I'm sure you can't read, uh, but it's 28, 28 shipwrecks in the Bahamas, right around my iguana, Samana Key, Plana, Great Anagua, and so on. This list was put together by me and one of the best shipwreck treasure historians, two of them, father and daughter, in the world. And they live in Paris, France. Uh, the girl has 10,000 files of treasure wrecks, but people have to pay for a file, the information on each shipwreck. We paid $3,000 for one wreck, at my iguana, a ship that was a French ship, and it sank with 220,000 gold French franc coins, worth around 50 to 100 million dollars. I have the location. I was there last year, through the month of July and part of August. The winds blew every day but one day. We couldn't get the boat to the site of the wreck because it was a, the seas, were so rough, the boat was only eight meters long. It was like one of the few boats on the island. And um, the, uh, the distance that we would have to go from the resort where the boat was to the end of the island was 20 kilometers or more. And that would cost $600 a day. And we couldn't get there, so I left. And it was such a heartache because I had worked on that project for three years. Well, now with my friend Jim, who builds the radio towers in Nassau, uh, he and I have decided there's a better place where we don't have so many eyes watching us. And it's not far from uh, my iguana. It's called Samana Key. And there are 11 treasure ships on Samana. No one lives there. And uh, there wouldn't be any eyes watching us. Um, so um, that would be a good place to begin. We need electronics if we can't find the wrecks visually. Usually I pull Joe Barnett, this great diver. He's 76 years old. He can do 300 push-ups. None of us can do that. And uh, he dives four to six hours day beach dives and if we pull him behind a boat you know an eight meter boat we can visually spot shipwrecks but not the wood the wood is gone in tropical waters so what we see are ballast stones anchors and cannons now if they're bronze cannons a bronze cannon is worth about one hundred thousand um, dollars so um, the plan is we need a bigger boat, we need financing, I have to pay Joe Barnett, I would like to be paid, we are totally dedicated to this, we're willing to go to the Bahamas, live on a boat, 
live somewhere there, but we need some basic things. That is lodging, food, fuel, um, and uh, some electronics probably like my magnetometer and side scan sonar. Um, and I know how to operate these things. So we're ready to begin. And uh, I will put you in touch with Joe Barnett if you wish. He lives in La Jolla, California. And um, also I have another document that's related to this. It is a map that shows the location of the 28 shipwrecks around Mayaguana, Samana, Great Anagua, and so on. Um, I've also dived in Mauritius, Africa. I'm almost done with this pitch. And I uh, discovered a ship that I researched for three years. It's an English East Indiaman called the Veralst. It sank in 1771 with 740 pounds of diamonds and the world's largest diamond, as big as the wrist. I never received the license. And uh, the wreckage is, you know, the cannons are there. There's really no wood left. But I believe that the diamonds, and I've been there one time, I think they're up on the reef. That would be a tricky proposition. But it, the diamonds can be found because Sir Robert Marks was able to salvage a shipwreck called the St. Geron, one mile north. That was maybe 30 years ago. So I have a list of many, many wrecks. The Knights of Malta wreck in Sicily, I have that location. We don't need much money on shallow water wrecks, okay? And um, I don't think you can find anybody better than me. I understand business. I'm half German <laughs> and half English, but 100% American. I have been to the Bahamas many times and I would like to meet you people there in the Bahamas. Thank you and uh, have a great day oh, before I go. Joe and I went to the Bahamas in 1994. We found a pirate ship in Nassau Harbor and it was burnt. And the captain was a woman. Her name was Ann Bonnie. We found a box under the sand, a wooden box. It disintegrated when we brought it up and um, inside were 200 pipes. And to show you how you can make money on shipwrecks, I sold each pipe for $200 a piece. Cannonballs are worth money, but we're after the gold, the diamonds, the silver, the coins. Okay, so I hope you will join us. Thanks for listening. Over and out.